Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over how to hedge your portfolio. And what you need for this tutorial is just a vector of dates and returns of your portfolio. If you don't have one, I'll go ahead and provide one as an example. So we're gonna read that in as a CSV file. So as an example, this should be the format it should be in, just the date and the portfolio returns each day. So once you read your portfolio in, I'm just gonna convert it into an XTS object, which is the very next line. I'm gonna format the column names and I'm gonna fill all NAs with zero. I'll go ahead and assign the very first trading day in my portfolio so that we can call in data later. I'll go ahead and plot the returns of my portfolio using charts performance summary. And if we take a look at that chart, so this is the cumulative return of my portfolio along with the daily return and the drawdown. So I didn't do much trading in early 2019. So now let's take a look at how we can hedge out our portfolio. So I'll make a copy of my portfolio and assign it to this variable called to hedge. So what are we trying to hedge against? We're trying to hedge against systematic risk or sector specific risk. And we can try and hedge out the systematic risk using any of these ETFs that track indices. And for the sector specific risk, we can hedge that out by using any of the spiders sector ETFs. So I'm gonna create a new environment to get the data. I'm gonna assign the tickers and get the symbols and get the symbols from Yahoo Finance. So the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna merge all the adjusted closes together in this variable called risk. And I'm gonna reformat the column names by just dropping the dot adjusted. I'm gonna calculate returns for those ETFs. I'll go ahead and combine all those ETFs with my portfolio. So here we'll take a look at risk. So now we have an XTS object with our portfolio returns along with the ETFs since the beginning of my portfolio returns. So the next thing I'll do is view the correlations to see where I have the most exposure in. So let's run this line. So if we focus on this very first column and we're gonna go ahead and sort this in descending order. It looks like I have a 65% correlation with the QQQ. So I'll be trying to focus on hedging out my portfolio using the QQQ as a benchmark. But you could do this with any of these ETFs. Now the way I approach this is by finding the betas and only the betas for the downside. So in the following line, I'll just do the Kaplan beta bear, which should return my exposure to the downside using the SPY. So I'll go ahead and assign that. Another approach that came to mind is if I find the rolling mean of my portfolio in the past three days. So I'll go ahead and create a variable and add it to my portfolio as well. And in order for us to create a signal, what I'll do is if this average is less than zero, then I want to go ahead and short the benchmark because that would mean that my portfolio is moving towards the downside. So I'll go ahead and create a signal and assign it to my portfolio. So now if we take a look at two hedge, we have our portfolio returns, the mean return the past three days and the signal. So now that we have a signal, I'm just gonna try and use the betas to hedge out my portfolio. I'll go ahead and add the benchmark to my portfolio XTS object. Now here's where I'm gonna calculate the return. So I have an if else statement. So if the signal is negative one, we need to short. So if that is true, I'm gonna use the signal. So if that is true, I'm gonna multiply the signal times the SPY return multiplied by our hedge SPY, which is our cap and beta bear plus our portfolio return. Otherwise just return our portfolio returns. So I'll go ahead and run this line. So now let's take a look at the returns that it gets. All right, so our portfolio is the black line and this red line is our hedged version. Now I do see that in the early parts of 2020, our drawdown is minimal compared to our portfolio, but in the most recent months, it looks like they are pretty much very well on track or approximately the same. So to me, this doesn't provide very much of a hedge if we're also getting the same downside. So the next thing I thought of was if I use a rolling beta instead of a static one. So we'll go ahead and calculate a rolling beta in the following lines. Now to do that, I'm just gonna use roll apply. I'm gonna pass in my portfolio. The function will be cap and beta bear. The benchmark variable will be the SPY. The risk-free rate is zero. The roll will be every 20 days moving by one day and I'm just aligning to the right and I'm gonna apply this by column. So if we go ahead and run that line, I'm gonna remove any NAs now, once we have calculating our rolling beta, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the strategy. So it'll be similar to this block here where if the signal is negative one, we need to multiply the signal times the benchmark return times the rolling beta. 
plus our portfolio return. Otherwise, just return our portfolio return. So we'll go ahead and add that to our XTS object. So now let's take a look at the plot of what that looks like. So it looks like we get a much better return than using a fixed beta. And also our drawdowns are less, which is what I want to see. Now the main problem with using this is that sometimes the beta for this rolling hedge is greater than one, which means that we need to hedge out more than 100% of our portfolio. And I did not like that because that involves using more margin, which is more risk. And if you want to look at how many times that actually occurred within this back test, you can subset to view where the rolling beta is greater than one and the signal is negative one. So the final thing I decided to do was just to hedge the portfolio at a constant. So here we have 0.50, which just means that I'm just gonna hedge out my portfolio by 50% of its value. So I'll go ahead and take a look at the returns. Again, I need to apply the strategy. So if the signal is negative one, I need to multiply the signal times our benchmark return times 50% and add that to my portfolio returns. Otherwise, if we don't get a signal, just return our portfolio returns. So I'll go ahead and add this to our XTS object. And now let's take a look at the returns using the static beta. So by just hedging out 50% of our portfolio value, it looks like we get a much better return than the previous two methods. And by looking at the drawdowns, we see that the blue line is less than the black line which is what I want to see. So what I did next was just to pack all of the lines we just went over into a function. And this will calculate the returns depending on what benchmark you decide to use. So if we want to hedge against the QQQs, we would just assign hedge to QQQ, the static hedge or the portfolio percentage that you want to hedge out. And also the number of look back days that we use to view our mean return, which was calculated up here at the very top. So this variable can change depending on what you plug into this function. So I'll go ahead and run this function and we'll go ahead and take a look at the different returns using different benchmarks. All right, so I'm just gonna reassign to hedge, which will provide a clean slate, so to speak. I wanna keep the percentage hedge at 50% of my portfolio value. The number of down days I wanna look back is just two. And we're gonna go ahead and test this function out by passing in the SPY as our benchmark or the ETF that we're using to hedge. The static hedge will just be the percentage hedge and the down end days will just be down days. So I'll go ahead and run this line and we're gonna go ahead and plot that as well. So we'll take a look at the returns. All that I really changed was the number of down days that it does not change by much, meaning that we still have the blue line outperforming all others and the drawdowns for the blue line are less than the black line, which is our portfolio. So I didn't have that many returns in 2019, or they were very close to zero, which is why this blue line and this red line are significantly less than our portfolio. It's just that we are trying to hedge when our returns of our portfolio are very slim. So now that you have this function, you can pass any ETF that you want. So here I provided some examples if you wanna hedge out using the queues or using the diamond and you could view the results and the performances here. And you could do that combined as well, along with the sector specific risk. So if you think that your portfolio needs hedging against the financials or the energy ETFs, you can view the performances here as well. But since my portfolio does not have that much exposure to the energy or the financials, then I won't go ahead and run this but I'll leave that in there just in case if you want to see what your portfolio returns look like using any of the sector ETFs. But the very last thing I wanted to cover was an attempt to actually optimize the variables. So the variables I want to optimize are just the static hedge and the number of down days. So in other words, what percentage would be optimal for me to hedge my portfolio and also the number of down days. So in order to do that, we have to set our lower and upper limits so for the lower limits, we have a 5% hedge against our portfolio and a maximum of one or 100% of our portfolio value. And for the down days, we have a minimum of two and a maximum of 20 days. So I'll go ahead and run this. I'll go ahead and reassign my two hedge XTS object. So I'm gonna split this into two, our test variable and our validation. So for our test, I'll just include the returns up to the end of 2020. And for validation, I'll just use the 2021 returns. So we'll go ahead and split that, assign our test variable into our two hedge, since that's what we're gonna pass into this function or this optimization. 
Now I need to create an optimization function and what I'm trying to optimize is by the sharp ratio. So what this function will do is I'm just gonna pass in the QQQ for the benchmark. It'll try to find the optimization or the combination of the static hedge and the number of down days. Once I get the returns, I'm just gonna calculate the sharp ratio and try to find the combination that returns the highest sharp ratio for these combinations. So I'll go ahead and run this function that I want to optimize. Now we need to create a function as well where I round our first variable to two decimal places and that's the percentage that we want to hedge our portfolio. And the second variable will just be rounded to whole numbers. Since this involves the number of look back days, we can't have fractional look back days. So I'll go ahead and run this function as well. Now to actually use the optimization, I'm just gonna use DE optim. I'm gonna pass in my function I want to optimize, the lower and upper bounds, and the control list will just be, I want to run this 100 times, and I want to display this into the console. And for the FN map, I'm just gonna pass in this function here. So if we go ahead and run this, and we take a look at our console. So this is what you'll get in your console. So I'll briefly go over what these numbers mean. This number should be the sharp ratio since that's what we're trying to optimize. This number should be the static hedge and the three is just the down end days. So this will run and it'll stop at 100 iterations until it finds the very best combination. So I'll go ahead and stop this because I actually ran it before. So I'm just gonna read in the results. So I'll go ahead and load that into the environment. All right, so it looks like the best combination it found was if I hedge my portfolio 50% and the look back days were just two. So I'll go ahead and apply these numbers into the function and take a look at the results. Again, we need to reassign our two hedge XTS object. I'm gonna go ahead and apply those numbers that we got in our optimization. I'm gonna combine the portfolios. So I'll go ahead and plot the test series so for the testing, it looks like it did very well. Now let's take a look at the validation set. So for 2021, which is our validation, it looks like it holds true. And our blue line here is outperforming our portfolio, which, which is what we wanna see, along with the drawdowns as well. It looks like we get a lower drawdown than our regular portfolio. So you can go ahead and run this with any of the benchmarks you choose. And I'll go ahead and provide the script. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area. Well guys, this concludes the video. I really hope this information was useful. Please let me know your thoughts. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.